In this video, we learn how to write the first queries in SQL language in order to query a relational database. In our installation of SQL Server, we should have two databases, SQL Cores and Management. At the beginning, we'll focus on the SQL Cores database. In order to do this, we run this first line of code, use database name. We select it and we press the Run button, or alternatively we can use the button F5 on the keyboard. I could also choose the databases from this drop-down menu on the left. OK, let's explore the SQL Course database. Since it's a relational database as expected, we'll see some tables. Let's check them. There's customers, invoices, providers, products, prospects. Then, if we explore the single table customers, we can find some columns inside, such as customer ID, which is an integer, name, which is a varchar, a string. Now, with the SQL language, we want to go a little further. We want to see which data and which information are saved inside this table of my database. Let's start with example one. Visualize the content from columns, name and surname inside customers. Let's write our first SQL query. Let's pay attention to the two keywords written here in blue. Select and from. After select, we have to insert the names of the columns we need. If I want to visualize name and surname, I have to type after select name, because there's the column name, comma, because in order to separate the columns, I have to use a comma, plus the other column I need, which means surname. Instead, after from, I have to insert the name of the table in which these columns are. In this case, which is the table? Customers, invoices, providers? For this exercise, I'm interested to the customer's table, so it's going to be that one. Let's highlight this line of code, execute it, either with this button or F5, and let's see the result. So we see here that we have 10 customers saved in the table, with these values in columns, name and surname. Let's read the first comment. After the keyword select, we inserted the name of the columns we want to visualize. Meanwhile, after from the name of the table with those columns, let's see another similar example. Add one more column in order to visualize also the date of birth. How we can do this? We work with select or from. We'll work with select because it's where we insert the columns. But be careful to remember to separate the different columns with a comma. Now we select and execute again. And we see that one more column has appeared. Let's read the comment. In order to add a column, starting from example 1, what did I do? I inserted after select the name of the column I was interested to, separating it from the others with a comma. Let's see yet another similar example. This time I want all the column from the customer's table. How can I do it? There are two methods. For the first one, with a little patience, I can type the names of all the columns, obviously separated by a comma. I then select it, and here's the result. A second and faster method, this is a shortcut, and by shortcut we mean a code identical to another but shorter. In this scenario, the shortcut is the replacement of the full list with star, which we read as star. So select star from customer is the same thing but shorter, then typing select plus the full list of the column's name plus from. OK, let's read this important observation. In a real database, now this is a simple database, we have 10 customers. But think about a real database like a bank that has millions of customers, or even a table about the movements in a current account. How many movements happen in a bank? You can count millions in just a month. Here, if we type select star from current accounts movements, we are asking the database to return us millions and millions of rows. You can tell that this is a query that, simple as it is, it requires a huge amount of work coming from the database. We must avoid this type of query, also because they don't have much utility. But what should we do if we still want to have an idea about what's in the table? 
We just have to put between select and the list the instruction top 50. Of course, it could be top 10, top 100, but also top 1000. This suggests the database not to show every row of the table, but only 50. Let's try this for example. Select top 50, staff from customers. You can see that I'm putting top 50 between select and the list. Here's star. The result is that I visualize only 50 rows. Now, my customer's table has 10 rows, that's why nothing is changing. But we can see that if I change 50 with 5, I'll visualize only 5 rows. Now, let's pay attention to another important concept. These are not the first 5 rows. Don't be fooled, one could believe that these are the first 5 rows. Since I see customer ID 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. But in reality, it's known and documented that in relational databases do not have any order. There is no such concept as first row, second row, third row, or an implicit order based from the fact that that's the first column or an important column since it's customer ID. There is no order. I could run this query a million times and have 999 times this order and different one for the millionth. There is no specific order, unless we make it by using a new keyword. So after select and from, we add a new keyword, order by. If I use order by, you can see here I'm typing top 50 star from customers, order by name ISG, ASC stands for ascending from the smallest to the biggest. Here I'm extracting the first 50 customers ordered by name. We still change 50 with 5 and here I see the 5 customers. They are the first 5 ordered by name. Let's read the comment. The order, as well as ascending, can also be descending from the biggest to the smallest. If we don't specify ASG or DESG, DSG is sending from descending, by default the database uses ASG. Let's see another example. If I want to visualize name, surname and customer ID, but with a difference, I don't want to visualize the customer ID here when I run the query. Instead, I want to visualize another name, such as customer code. Now, let's read the comment because it's fundamental. I want to make this modification temporarily here, inside the output window. I definitely don't want to modify permanently the column's name inside the database. Never do such an operation, if not in some rare cases when requested because other people or auto queries may be working on the database. So never modify generally the structure of a real database. But if I just want to check the output column in a different format, I can easily reach this result. By putting after the column's name AS plus the name I want to visualize. As an example, let's launch this query. I see name, surname, and customer ID, but I see customer ID with the same name I typed after AS, customer code. Until now, we have learned how to visualize the content of a table's columns inside a relational database, plus also renaming the output if needed and to order and extract only a specific amount of rows. But in general, what's a fundamental activity in data analysis? It's to filter the data inside of table following specific criteria. Every software used for data analysis must allow this operation. Think about Excel, for example, where there's the famous data filter. Let's see how to do such thing with the SQL language. For example, I want to visualize name, surname, and country residence. But not from every customer, only of those who live in Italy. I want to add a filter on country residence that has to be Italy. How can I do this? First of all, I remember the first part with select and from. With select, I type the list of the columns I want to visualize, separated with a comma. With from, I type the table. In order to add the filter, I must add a new keyword where 
and after where I type my filter. Let's start with this simple filter, then we'll see others more complicated. In this scenario, the filter is the name of the column on which I want to apply it, which means country residence equal to... Be careful, the first time we tend to forget to put the equal sign, but here it's very important to put an operator as equal or other as major different country residence equal to Italy. I'm looking for the customers that live in Italy, so I type Italy, but take a look. Italy is put between single quotes. Why? Because if I don't put them, the query will fail and result with an error. This happens because without the quotes, the database doesn't look for the word Italy, but it looks for the column Italy, which does not exist. Let's try and take off the single quotes. Actually, let's run the query to see that we really don't see it on customers anymore. But I see only three of them, those with country equal Italy. Instead, if I take off the quotes, I get an error because it's looking for customers where the content of the column country residence is equal to the one of Italy. But the column Italy does not exist, from there we get the error. So in order to insert the filter, we use the new keyword where and Italy closed between single quotes because otherwise the database will look for an hypothetical column named Italy, which doesn't exist. Let's see another example. I want to visualize name, surname and country residence of who. Not only the customers who live in Italy, but also those who are named Alberto. So how can I do this? Should I use to where? I have two conditions. I could think about using two wares, but you see the answer is no, I won't use to where. So how can I do this? Meanwhile, we can start with select and from at the top. Then after where, we type the conditions. Here, country residence equal Italy and name equal Alberto. Then I link the two conditions with a keyword. In this case, uh, it's and. There's another option, another linker, which is OR. This is an action common to every programming language. We always have to pay attention to understand if we need AND or OR. With AND I have the customers that are both resident in Italy and Alberto. Let's highlight and run the query. You see that I only have one row. I don't have the other two anymore because their name wasn't Alberto. With AND I get both country resident equal Italy and name equal Alberto. Instead, with OR, we see the example over here. I get the residents in Italy, the ones we saw before, or those who are named Alberto, even if they are residents of another country, for example, USA. We can see that there's still the customer Alberto resident in Italy. But in addition, I also have those who are only residents in Italy or named Alberto. Let's see one last comment. In order to avoid any ambiguity, it's better to use inside the code the extended table's name. So we'll use DBO customers, DBO invoices, DBO products. And not simply customers, invoices and products. This works for every type of SQL code we make, so we'll have to type in also the first part of the table. Indeed, we can see here on the left in SQL Server that the tables are not simply named customers, invoices or products, but they all have a prefix in front of them, which is technically called the scheme. In this case, for the database we're using, this prefix is also DBO, but it could change. For this reason, we have to always specify it during the lessons when I'm speaking, or even in the exercises. We won't say it to make all easier, but be careful when you write SQL. Remember to always put the complete names of the table with the prefix. We'll also see that we can put in front of the table's name the name of the database to which they belong, in order to make more queries that work with tables or more databases, or even run a code that doesn't depend on the selected database.